My name is uh, Yann Lequin. I am a uh, vice president and chief AI scientist at uh, Facebook, and I'm also a professor of computer science and data science at New York University. The history of uh, AI is really indistinguishable or inseparable, really, from hardware development. A lot of the progress that we, we've been seeing in AI, in speech recognition, image recognition, etc., over the last few years, that was really enabled by GPUs. Theoreticians and algorithm people and software people, we like to think that we think in the abstract, but in fact, our imagination is somewhat limited by the hardware at our disposal. And so it's very important for the hardware community to build the right things because it will influence the you know, technological progress as, as we go forward. There are several types of hardware for deep learning that uh, the industry needs at the moment. So there is one type of hardware which is sort of very high power, doesn't need to be particularly low cost, and it's for training very large uh, machine learning systems. So that is required for kind of systematic exploration of uh, you know, what we can do with, uh, with deep learning and AI and you know, systematic experimentation. A second type of need is for training models that have already been designed. So let's say you know, you're Facebook and you want to train a new translation system because you have more data, or you want to train a new image recognition system because there's more objects that need to be recognized. You need a system that uses, for example, low precision arithmetics and uh, consumes less power, is less uh, 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 expensive. Also, the, the need for uh, fast communication between uh, nodes in a system like this is not as stringent as uh, for uh, research and development, where you want kind of quick response, if, essentially. And then there is a, a third use, which is uh, running neural nets on servers in, uh, in data centers. Companies do this all the time to kind of rank the results of a search or uh, rank your newsfeed on Facebook or figure out what to show you uh, every day or filter information. So there you need low latency, you need something that runs really efficiently, doesn't consume too much power because uh, you know, as time goes by, we're going to run more and more neural nets. And then the fourth uh, type of application is uh, embedded devices, your car, uh, you know, your lawnmower that you know, moves alone by itself, your vacuum cleaner, your smart camera, your mobile phone, uh, your augmented reality uh, glasses, all of this is going to require very low power, low cost uh, neural net accelerators, basically. This might require to reinvent the way we, we do arithmetics in, in circuits. There is sort of a standard way of uh, you know, computing products and sums of, uh, of numbers in computers, uh, which you know, make the result uh, accurate. But for running neural nets, you don't actually need that accurate of a computation when you do products and sums. And so people are kind of trying to design new ways of representing numbers that would be more efficient. So that's a really interesting uh, domain of investigation. Hardware influences the progress of science and technology. And the new generation is to design special purpose chips that are really devoted for AI, not kind of dual use with graphics and AI, but really focused on uh, AI and deep learning. The direction we are seeing in the um, new algorithms are going to influence hardware, and hardware designers have to take this into account. So things like something called dynamic networks, so it's sort of a new way of uh, uh, designing neural nets where the architecture of neural nets is not fixed, but is really determined by a program, and the resulting architecture of the neural net changes in a data-dependent way. So depending on which data comes in, the architecture of the neural net kind of changes dynamically. And that sort of changes a lot of what hardware needs to be able to do if, if, uh, you know, if a piece of hardware is to uh, be efficient at running those things. So some people call this software 2.0. It's kind of a new way of differentiable programming. It's kind of a new way of writing programs. And it would be nice to have hardware that kind of supports this. There are certain types of neural nets now uh, today that are appearing that have what's called an associative memory. So they, they have some sort of memory structure that they can access. Uh, for example, you have the system read a piece of text and it can remember the content of that piece of text in its memory, and then you can ask it questions about, about the text and it will access its memory to be able to answer the questions. And that memory is itself a piece of a neural net, but it's a particular type and it might require uh, sort of new hardware if we make those things sort of, you know, much bigger than, than they are today. Uh, so there are a few architectural uh, elements like this that will appear in the next few years that might require uh, special uh, hardware support. You know, there's a lot of applications to, uh, in the next few years of, of deep learning that will require uh, high power, high compute power 
but very low electrical power, you know, low power consumption. And one way to do this is to have very large neural nets, but where very few of the units are activated at any one time. So in the brain, for example, your, your, your neurons uh, at any one time are only about 2% active, if you want. We call this uh, sparse activations. So essentially the, the activation in the brain is very sparse. And what we'd like is have neural net models that are also very sparse. And what we need is hardware systems to be able to take advantage of the sparsity. Um, because it might be good for power consumption. We don't really know how to do this yet, but that's a trend that may occur in, over the next uh, five, 10 years. The influence of hardware on research and development in industry is very important. And so what really is clear from the history of uh, neural net and AI is, is that the type of hardware that people ha have at their disposal influences the type of research they do. Even though we like to think that, you know, we think in the abstract and we can come up with any kinds of idea, regardless of the hardware we have, the type of hardware we have really influences research. So the type of hardware that is being designed for the next decade is going to influence where AI is going. And that's, I think, a very important point.